This is a Scantec 2000 scan mill, which is a rebranded Inford Micro Mill 2000. And I'm going to show you how to get the axes running on um, a parallel port breakout board so you can run it with Linux CNC or Mach 3. I have removed the back panel. To do this, you're going to need a security screw bit. Um, I got this little set at Harbor Freight Tools. And you can see all of the back panel boards. So here we have a honkin' big transformer, kind of a main power distribution board. There's some wires that connect up to the front panel. The board over here is the spindle control board, and these two wires go over to that guy to control the speed of the spindle. And then this board here is the main control board. Um, this is manufactured by Balfour. I have a dispatch date 2005, so this is the one that has a little USB port down here as well as a serial port. And it is the Next Move ST by Balfour, which is uh, currently renamed ABB. Um, and so it's a pretty nice bit of hardware. There's some stepper drivers and then a main control board on the top. The main control board can talk via USB or serial port out to a computer. And this guy here will do all of your motion control for you, so it offloads the motion control from the computer. Um, if you go to Balfour, you can download their Mint programming system. Um, I think it's called Mint NC. And you can actually program this guy to do all kinds of fancy arcs and cams and moves. Um, however, I don't want to write a whole bunch of programs to make it work. I'm going to try to making it work with Linux CNC or with um, Mach 3. So to do that, I want to get access to a connector that's underneath this board here, this 96-way connector. This board is removed with two screws. There's a Phillips screw here and a Phillips screw down there, and they have some standoffs. So to do this, you're going to want to have a Phillips screwdriver and some hook nose pliers to hold on to the standoffs. I've already removed the bottom screw, so I'm going to use the hook nose pliers to hold on to the standoff and then loosen this top Phillips head screw here. It's quite easy because I've already actually taken it off once. Pull that out and you can get the stand off. You can save these in case you need to put it back on. The board itself is connected on with a double row here and a triple row connectors there. You'll want to take the serial port off of this thing first and then you can pull the board out and it's going to take a decent amount of force if it's the first time you've done it. This is not the first time I've done it. I basically just set it back up there for illustrative purposes, so it came off a lot easier than um, the first time. You basically have to kind of pry this thing from the top and bottom. Don't torque it. You don't want to twist these connectors. We'll be connecting through this 96-way connector here. That's three rows of 32 pins. Save this board. It might be useful to somebody else, or it might be useful to you later on. So this is the power part of the driver board. You can see the Balfour, or sorry, Baldor um, brand name is actually upside down, and all of the text on this board is upside down. However, when we talk about the top of the connector, this is still the top of the connector. So these guys are numbered and lettered. So we have C is the row farthest to the left, B is the row in the middle, and then A is the row over here on the right-hand side. So A1 is that top right pin, C1 is the top left pin, and then you go all the way down to A32 on the bottom there. Some of these pins go directly to the step and direction um, controls on the stepper drivers, and so we're just going to tie into that. There's also a couple pins up near the top that have plus 5 volts, so if your breakout board needs a 5 volt supply like mine does, you can pull it right off of this board. This is a $30 breakout board, also known as a Bob, and essentially it has a standard parallel port coming in, and then it has opto-isolators to isolate the signals there to all of these pins over here. Some of these pins are input or output selectable by jumpers. Some of them are only output. Some of them are only input. My particular board requires a 5 volt power supply over here and it has to have 5 volts to the enable line to run. So I have the red and black wire going to ground and 5 volts. Then I'm using pins here um, for step and direction and then a ground. The common is hooked to ground and not 5 volts. You don't actually technically need a breakout board. You could just take all these wires out of a standard parallel cable and plug it directly into the mill, but if something shorted out or messed up, you'd blow up your parallel port. 
I'm using a $20 garage sale laptop, so it may not matter, but I figured I might as well have the right device. And my plan eventually is to mount this inside of the mill and then have a wire coming out of it. The only real annoyance I ran into is that a standard parallel printer cable is not exactly what you need to plug into this and a computer. Um, so this guy, a standard parallel printer cable, has male on one end but female on the other, and my breakout board has female. And I need two males, one to hook to the computer and one to hook to the breakout board. So either buy a male-to-male -male DB25 serial cable and use that, or you can buy a mini gender changer that'll take the other end from female to male and make it plug into your computer. Or you can buy a breakout board where they use the correct pinout here, a male pinout instead of a female pinout, so that a regular printer cable would work. This is a DIN or DIN connector. It's a 96-way connector, which means it has three rows of 32, um, and it's fully populated. You can buy some of these without pins or in certain rows, and you want pins in all the rows to be able to solder on to. I have hooked up here the ground and positive 5 volts for the power supply, and then I have here the X, Y, and Z axis. I have a direction, a step, and a ground for each of those three axes. Um, the pinouts you can find online. I'll post them on my website. See the uh, comment here for the link for my website. Um, I would say just solder up just one axis, make sure everything works, get your so software on the computer and the parallel port all working, and then bother soldering the other two axes. I'm using uh, heat shrink tubing here to kind of insulate everything back and forth from each other, but if you do a good enough job soldering with a short enough lead at the end of the wire there, um, you might not even need the heat shrink tubing. So I've marked the top end of my connector up, which is up, even though this text is upside down. Um, also, the plus and minus 5 volts, or ground and plus 5 volts up here are at the top, so that's a nice indicator visually that this should be the top. Um, if you don't have a dispatch date 2005 machine, you might want to measure these and make sure that the correct pins are giving you plus 5 volts to make sure they haven't flipped the orientation at any point. But I believe, looking at a lot of online forums, that this orientation is going to be in all of their machines. So then you just have to mount this guy on there, being careful not to get any pins bent. All right, now let's go back to the front of the machine. Okay, so now you fire up your favorite parallel port driving software like Linux CNC or Mach 3 and turn the power on. And at this point, you can start jogging the axes. Okay, so all of the limit switches come into this board, and I believe most of them go into this connector. So my next task will be to hook up all of the homing switches and the emergency stop type switches on the front panel, so I have access to all of those. The trickiest bit is going to be the spindle controller. This spindle controller, I'm in the United States, so it operates 110 volts. If you're in the UK, it'll be 240. Um, it needs to be isolated from the rest of the circuitry. It has a 0 to 10 volt input that controls the spindle, but that 0 to 10 volts is from about 100 to 120 volts in real time. And so you can't just hook these wires directly into your breakout board and blow things up and bad things would happen. I believe, I'm not certain yet, but I believe there's a pin on here that I can drive with a 5 volt PWM signal that will drive that 0 to 10 volt isolated output on this board, because this board does drive that guy. So if I find the right pin, I'll be able to just use the spindle control board. Um, worst case scenario, I might buy a breakout board with an isolated 0 to 10 volt spindle driver, or I could replace this spindle driver board with a more modern one and drive it directly from the breakout board there. So my next video will talk about the limit switches and the spindle control and getting all of that working. Um, look in the description of the video for a link to my URL for my blog where I'll be posting all the detailed pin outs for all of these